Hello friends, in this tutorial we shall study the bit error rate for a multi user spread spectrum system uh, that is a DSSS MU BPSK system over a frequency selective uh, fading channel which uh, we are going to model as a Rayleigh fading channel. So as we see we have multiple users transmitting data to a common source that is uh, sorry a common destination and these multiple sources have been labeled as 1 to k so there are k number of users and each user over here is uh, the data corresponding to each user is uh, spread using uh, DSSS spreading code which is further modulated and combined uh, and passed through the channel. The combiner in our case for this uh, the spread signals of these k users uh, is going to be a simple summer as we shall see and uh, the channel which we are going to use is going to be the Rayleigh fading frequency selective channel at the receiver we have uh, the AWGN noise and uh, after performing MMSC equalization we despread the signal using the spreading code of that user whose signal we wish to uh, receive or decode. Of course uh, this uh, block you may be familiar with it is nothing but taking the inner product of the desired, desired user spreading code with the incoming received signal and summing over all the elements of the result. We further uh, pass this through the BPSK demodulator in order to uh, detect or decode the bits of the user that we wish to uh, know the signal of the user that we wish to decode. So once again remember that the modulating data source uh, will emit um, a binary stream of bits. For example, we could have let us say if uh, bit 1 that is a binary bit 1 is sent then this is going to be mapped to a bipolar signal level. Let us say some other user wants to transmit a 0 then the bipolar representation of this let us say could be minus 1. The spreading code generator will have uh, some spreading code length let us say the length is equal to 4 then in that case we might have some spreading sequence for example which may be once again represented in bipolar terms and this multiplication is nothing but the multiplication of this bipolar input signal to each of these uh, bipolar entities of the spreading code. So similarly this will be multiplied by some other unique spreading code which may be orthogonal to the spreading code of the first user. Uh, the examples of such codes we have already seen uh, this different unique codes orthogonal codes with good autocorrelation and cross correlation properties for uh, instance we could have uh, Walsh had Ahmad codes and therefore these code sequences could be rows corresponding to the Hadamard matrix which we have generated previously in our uh, tutorials uh, where we showed the MATLAB code for its generation. As I said this combiner in our case will be simply sum summing up the resultant spread signal that is after multiplication what we get over here. So we depending on the number of users we will sum up the corresponding elements in order to get the composite signal. So let us proceed and see as to what is the concept of multi user communication. So in our system model we assume downlink transmission. So this is an important point that needs to be noted. We are not analyzing this system or not evaluating its performance for uplink 
I will uh, come to the problems involved for uplink uh, performance evaluation in a short while. But as of now, please note that we are going to do downlink performance evaluation. So, we have a base station and we could have multiple users from 1 to capital K as was shown before. Uh, user small k is some arbitrary user. It is assumed that each of these users uh, signals uh, at the receiver will be due to multipath effects of the signal which has been transmitted from the base station. For example, user k over here is a direct uh, path, line of sight path with channel gain A and delay tau naught and then it has two other paths. Similarly, user 2 sorry user 1 has a direct line of sight path and another reflected path. So, in general we could uh, change the parameters that is the channel gain, the delay etcetera and we could model the entire system. So, we will see what kind of model we have uh, or what, kind of what are the parameters that we have chosen for simulation. So, that we will see shortly. <coughs> But as was explained in the previous tutorial as well, for each user we could model this phenomenon in terms of uh, linear filter with uh, tap gains corresponding to the channel gains and tap delays corresponding to the path delays. So, this is a mathematical model for the multipath fading due to each uh, path for a given user and for a mobile channel as we know we can if the path number of paths are sufficient enough which is an assumption of course in this case then uh, we could model this uh, the amplitudes or rather the multipath in terms of Rayleigh distributed amplitudes which have uniform phase from 0 to 2 pi. So, that is what we are going to do. Uh, as we proceed. Uh, the two points which I had also made in the last uh, tutorial that is uh, the detection errors even though we have the right spreading code could occur due to channel impairments and noise which is the intention or objective of this tutorial and uh, so we need to find out the probability of error and another thing is that good autocorrelation property of the spreading code and in this case uh, of course, uh, the autocorrelation property can be used in order to counter the multipath fading and the good cross correlation properties are useful in a multi user scenario. So, let us have a look at the MATLAB code that implements the system model just described. Uh, we have a certain number of samples uh, which is nothing but the number of bits that we need to transmit. We are going to run this entire simulation uh, over 200 iterations in uh, as Monte Carlo simulations basically. So, we have a length of the spreading code equal to 4. We assume that we have 3 users. So, it is a pretty simple case. We set the EB by N naught range. In line number 19, we have uh, N 20. We initialize the variables that uh, we will use to store the average probability of error and the combined signal spread signal due to the three users respectively. We assume a exponential power delay profile which is not uncommon in uh, mobile communication systems. So, we set the delay parameter to a typical value of uh, 1.2 and we choose uh, the number of multipaths to be 4 for all users. So, this is a simplistic assumption you could change this and explore uh, in order to see how the performance evaluation uh, looks like. We choose the uh, number of uh, or rather the delay corresponding to the multipaths and uh, we generate the exponential power delay profile in line number 25 uh, using the parameters uh, that is the decay parameter and the delay. 
we find the amplitude for this uh, power delay profile which we use in order to generate the impulse response subsequently. The Rayleigh distributed random variables are generated in line number 27 which is nothing but a complex Gaussian uh, entity as you can see. The uh, impulse response of the channel is nothing but this complex Gaussian quantity multiplied by the PDP amplitude which is exponentially decaying. So, this is a standard procedure in order to generate uh, the impulse response of a Rayleigh fading frequency selective channel. The channel power is found from this uh, impulse response uh, because we need to normalize the impulse response in 30 and we do that in line number 32 and you could then plot this impulse response uh, versus the delay in order to look how it look uh, how, how it is like. Uh, we had done this in the previous um, tutorial. So, that is why I am not shown the plot over here. Uh, the next uh, part of the code sorry the MATLAB code is to generate the Hadamard uh, matrix the rows of which uh, are correspond to unique orthogonal spreading codes. So, that is in line number 39 and then we use a for loop in order to uh, generate uh, data random data. Uh, which will have a length that we have already chosen before that is in line number 14 as you can see. And we spread the data by finding the inner product as I said, but what is to be noted in line number 42 is that uh, since this is a loop and it runs over the given number of users for each user this variable a will keep changing. And so, what we are doing is we are choosing a given row of data from the um, that is from this line number 41 which is the which is nothing but a matrix comprising of uh, rows corresponding to users data. So, we choose the given row for a given user in this case there are 3 users. So, we choose a given row and multiply it with a row of the Adamard matrix which again is unique. So, for three users in this case we will have three different rows of the input data matrix and three different rows of the Hadamard matrix which we have found in line number 31. So, once this inner product is found we store it in this uh, variable and then we run the loop again for the next iteration uh, for the next user. So, like this uh, in this manner we complete uh, for this case 3 iterations and we get the composite signal which is uh, the addition of the 3 spread data signal sequences. We store the length of this uh, combined signal which will be the length of uh, the individual spread uh, signal itself because we are adding up the 3. So, the length does not change as such we calculate the power of the combined composite multiple uh, user spread spectrum signal in line number 47, because we need to use it in order to scale the power accordingly. And uh, what we notice is that we divide this entire power by the length of the transmit data. Uh, so, basically what we are doing in this code is that we are assuming that the available transmit power is split into the 3 uh, that is uh, 3 users are sharing un the available power. So, we have uniform power allocation scheme. Uh, we calculate the noise uh, in this uh, if else part of the code, but before that we convert the E b by n naught to linear scale and then we convolve the combined multi user signal with the impulse response that we had generated in line number 32. So, this 
takes care of the frequency selective nature of the channel and uh, we generate noise depending on whether we are plotting the E B by N naught for the B E R or whether we are plotting the S N R. So, the difference as was pointed out in the previous tutorial is that when we do it with E B by N naught since uh, the energy the same energy per chip in the un, uh, that is the original signal is spread when we uh, carry out the spreading process. So, we need to do this uh, scaling however, for S N R the power remains same uh, per chip with or without spreading. So, this square root length code term does not figure over here. However, we shall plot the results against E B by naught. The received data is added is nothing but the addition of the transmitted data from 55 plus uh, noise that is generated and uh, we calculate the variance of the noise because we need to use this parameter for uh, the MMSE equalizer which follows. The MMSE equalizer <coughs> is uh, uh, LC plus 1 tap equalizer the code of which is shown over here and uh, what we see is that uh, we finally, use this uh, equalizer in order to mitigate the effects of uh, frequency selective fading and once that is done we store the signal and we use the mathematical operations that I had already discussed in the previous tutorial. So, this part of the code from uh, 74 to I think uh, we have 97 follows the same uh, procedure as we had discussed in the single user case in the last tutorial. So, I am not repeating this part and the decoded signal after de spreading with the code of the desired user in this case we are using uh, as you can see the code of the second user. So, that is what is uh, to be decoded in line number uh, 95. So, once we do that we find out the error we sum it up and we average in line number 103. So, the idea now is to see as to what kind of BR performance a multi user a 3 user in this case system uh, spread spectrum system yields in the presence of a frequency selective channel. So, what we see here is that we have uh, the performance of BPSK system without spreading in a Rayleigh faded channel which is given by this uh, circle markers and the performance with one user with spreading is given by this square markers. So, this this uh, set of curves we already discussed in the last tutorial and we had seen that uh, spreading helps us combat multipath due to the autocorrelation properties of the spreading code. So, it gives us a better performance uh, with spreading as compared to without spreading. Uh, please note that uh, BPSK without spreading has been carried out for a single user. So, the comparison uh, was already discussed in the last tutorial, but now our interest is to see what happens in the multi user scenario and as we shall uh, as we see there is a performance degradation uh, when the number of users increase the BER performance a, uh, degrades and is poor uh, when the when we have a BPSK with a spreading code of sorry with uh, 3 number of users. So, this of course, has been done for a length uh, code length of uh, 4 uh, you could experiment with uh, higher code lengths higher multipath numbers uh, by varying the power delay profile parameters etcetera and you could see how the system uh, behaves. But uh, I would like to make two very important points over here and the first point is that 
this performance evaluation has been done for downlink uh, with uniform power allocation or equal power allocation for all the users. So, we basically had split the total transmit power of into three components in this case equal components and we had assigned that power to each user. So, this was a simplistic assumption that we had made. Uh, downlink is important because uh, performance evaluation in the uplink will be more challenging. The reason is because usually we need to come up with a power allocation scheme which is optimum for uplink. We may not use a uniform power allocation scheme for uh, for uplink because the users may be distributed uh, in terms of proximity from the base station at different locations. So, certain users may be closer to the base station and some users may be at a distance in which case in the uplink the users uh, close to the base station if we assign equal power to all the users then users close to the base station will act as strong interferers to users which are at a far away distance from the base station. And as such what happens is uh, that uh, the performance for different users will vary and uh, users far away from the base station will see a, a very significant performance uh, degradation. So, in that case we will have to come up with some kind of power allocation scheme depending on the location of the users. Uh, in essence what I am trying to talk about is the near far effect that needs to be taken into account before allocating power and so the uplink problem to start with becomes uh, more challenging than the downlink problem. Our evaluation is for downlink and uh, another uh, very important assumption that we have made is regarding synchronization of the received signal uh, with the codes that we are trying to correlate the received signal with. So, we have assumed this to be perfect. So, in actual situations in reality there will be some loss in synchronization inevitably and now it depends upon the correlation properties of the code as to how this will manifest in BR degradation. The reason why I am making these two points is because the performance that we see over here is due to these assumptions is the is a very optimistic uh, view of things, but generally it the performance of this multi user DSS is BPSK system may be worse than what is shown over here. If we uh, relax these assumptions and we have models in order to uh, incorporate uh, synchronization offset errors, timing offset errors etcetera and also if we uh, try and uh, repeat this exercise for uplink uh, by considering near far effect and so on so forth. So, this concludes the tutorial for multi user DSSS BPSK system over a relay fading channel with MMSE equalization. I thank you.